Hi guys, another video live streaming and because uh, my phone phone memories run out as usual just phone cluttered up with uh, videos and photographs for eBay basically anyway how is everyone so what we're doing today is uh, I'm going to be priming a canvas and not using gesso so I want to show you what I will be using and um, show the result and the process so I'm going to going to live stream it and publish it later so you'll have to forgive any uh, errors or errs or verbal typos that come out but it uh, should be okay so let's have a look at the material shall we so I've got a nice brand new canvas uh, rough tooth canvas which is unprimed and I'm going to be using multi-medium gloss by Ranger, I believe. Uh, sea whites, acrylic white paint, uh, water, and you'll need a brush and something to mix it with. And that's it really. So uh, gesso is basically binder, which is glue. Some people use PVA and um, calcium carbonate which they use as a filler because it's a chalky kind of rough finish and uh, pigment which is white paint basically you don't have to use white paint you can use any color you like but um, I'll show you uh, show you how I mix my gesso alternative without using calcium carbonate basically I'm looking up here but the, the camera's over here but anyway let's um, get this phone set up and see if I can show you what's going on. Should be okay like that if I can get some um, wires and things out of the way. And the phone doesn't move around too much during production. You can see how well prepared I am, can't you? So, this is a brand new canvas. Still got the wrapper on it, which is a bit of a challenge to get the, uh, the plastic wrapper off it without damaging it. But not exactly a problem. Sea uh, White's canvas panel board, unprimed for about £1.60 per board, I think. Maybe 170. You can get it a bit cheaper if you buy 10 of them. Just smelling it because they always smell nice. Sea whites. Probably show up backwards on the camera. But anyway. So, brand new canvas board. It's very rough tooth though. When I uh, when I tried to draw on it in pencil, the pencil wouldn't even. I couldn't even add details to it. It was that rough because the pencil was just like skimming across the high points of the canvas and not going into the grooves. So I decided I'd uh, prime the canvas first. But I'll just show you the quick method. So I've got multi-medium gloss and paint. And the basic and water, and you basically mix up equal parts of a third of each. And I actually made the last uh, mix a little bit thinner because I wanted it transparent, and I'll show you why at the end. But let's uh, let's make up some some more primer. Let's not call it gesso because we haven't got the chalk filler in it, which is calcium carbonate, which is very cheap to buy, by the way, if you do want to use cheap uh, chalk. So here's some I made earlier. And um, it's exactly like gesso, but without the chalk filler in it. And the way I make it, it's also semi-translucent, transparent. So if you have drawn on your canvas beforehand, you can still see your 
pencil sketch with charcoal through the paint, through the um, primer, which is good. So what I do is I use a little teaspoon. And I find that this is a, an A3 canvas. And I find that one teaspoon of each ingredient is enough to do one A3 canvas. So if, you, if you're doing A2, obviously you want to use two teaspoons of each ingredient. So let's start with the um, multi-medium gloss. It's, uh, it's incredibly simple. So I just want one, not even heaped, just want one, one teaspoon of this. And just one teaspoon of each will be enough to do an entire A3 canvas. So you don't need to make up buckets of it and freeze it and store it in the fridge or in the garage or in the deep freeze or any of that rubbish. Just mix up a little bit when you need it. This Sea White's paint's brilliant, by the way. Uh, I'll add a link to the Sea White's website in the description. So that's my medium in there. Now I just want about the same amount of white paint, about a teaspoon. You don't need to be very accurate, which is good. So I've got about a teaspoon of white paint. And then I want, so I'll mix, I'll mix those up first. Just give them a good start in life. I'll show you the consistency. It's kind of like like yogurt, yogurt consistency at the moment. It's a little bit. You could use it like that, but it's a little bit thick for what I want. I don't need it to be quite so um, gluey or quite so white, opaque this, opaque white. So that's that mixed up. So now I just want to add some water. So my brush was just standing in the water. So the, um, the previous primer didn't go hard glue on me. So that's just some um, water with a little bit of, uh, well I cleaned the brush in it with the previous primer, but it's still okay to use to mix. So I'll use one flat teaspoon of water. So that's about an equal mix of one teaspoon of each. But because these are flat teaspoons, I'll add another one. So that's about equal parts now. And I'll just add one more because I like it quite, quite flexible so I can spread it around. And just give that a good mix with your teaspoon to make sure all the uh, medium and all the paint and all the water are thoroughly mixed together, basically. You see people buying, buying uh, 10 kilo buckets of calcium carbonate gallons of PVA glue and entire tubes of white paint and then they they only gesso one canvas I don't know how long it keeps for but it, if it dries anything like acrylic paint it won't last for long I suppose if you seal it in an airtight airtight container and put it in the fridge it might last longer but as soon as the water evaporates it's gone off, see? The, uh, the paint will dry and the glue will dry and that'll be the end of it. The primer, it's not glue actually. It's primer. That's not the, uh, the recommended amounts for gesso, by the way. 
just what I like to use because it gives me a nice thin co even coat so that's thoroughly mixed up now and it's just just at the stage where it just pours nicely look so it's like a thin nice thin paint but it's got the binder in it as well which is the multi-gloss medium I can leave the spoon in there I can put the the spoon back in the water and let that soak so I'm using a large flat brush and I'll put that to one side that's my drink there a large flat brush doesn't have to be too large but some people like larger because you cover ground quicker I'm not in a rush so I've got a brush that's about three quarters of an inch across flat brush does the job so wet the brush and then squeegee off the excess because you don't need your brush very wet because that will just dilute down the primer doesn't matter if you get a little bit on the canvas and then I nice start at the top which is up here and I go left to right and then down Sometimes if I've got a bigger canvas, I'll do half of it at once. And um, just load the brush up with a reasonable amount. You don't need loads. You can just apply it on in a nice even coat. Very similar. And if, you, um, if you're splashing it, getting it on your desk and things, keep a bit of tissue handy because otherwise you'll have to clean it up afterwards. So you want to apply it on with nice, broad, even strokes. Very similar to how you would seal a painting with fixative when you've done it. And you don't want any, any streaky lines on it. So spread it out nicely. It doesn't have to be too perfect, you don't have to do it too evenly or worry about it being too thick in some places and too thin in others. Just spread it out so it's nicely covering the canvas, basically. Uh, you will get some on your desk, so I suggest you do it on a piece of paper or on a piece of, or on a piece of old newspaper. And once you've got a nice even coat on there and there's no streaky lines, don't go over it too many times because you'll just be adding paintbrush marks to it. Let's get right in the corner up here. Right on the edge, sorry. In the corner. And what you're doing is you're basically putting a thin coat of primer on the canvas to cover the tooth of the canvas because unprimed canvas, if you get good quality stuff, is difficult to paint on. As far as I know, anyway. Like, I'm not an expert on it by any means, but it's very, very difficult to draw on it with a pencil. I imagine the paint would get soaked up by the, um, the holes between the canvas and you'd have difficulty getting uh, details painted on it. And if you've seen my previous work, you'll know I quite like my details on my paintings. Make sure you get rid of any hairs that might show up because otherwise they'll be glued to the canvas See if we can just move this over a little bit so you get a better view of what I'm doing yeah that's a good view a direct view of the canvas from there it's called hitting the canvas Boxers know all about that. 
Right, so just hold it up to the light to see where you've got to because you don't want to miss any areas. You want to make sure you've got a nice even coverage. It doesn't have to be very thick. And you can apply multiple layers if you want if you want a thick coat of it, but I don't recommend that personally. I'm just holding it up, seeing the shiny side in the light. I can see where I've primed it there. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit thick or a little bit thin in some areas, just make sure you've got a nice even coating and that it's all covered. And I'll show you why I mixed it up nice and thin in a little while. Not only do you only need a little bit if you mix it thin uh, and it goes a, goes a long way, but it also becomes semi-translucent, like partly transparent. So if you have a sketch on your canvas and you want to prime over it, it doesn't ruin your sketch basically. So you don't have to do it all again. Sorry about that. This must be good, I'm having a having a hot flush doing it. Let's get right on that edge. I'll show you how to uh, clean the edge up in a minute. Just let me finish this quick, nearly done. And just do it so you don't see any, any lines or streaks on it. Because those, when they dry, those will be ridges on your painting. They'll collect paint and they'll look a bit odd. And they might make it difficult to paint around just this corner and I've got a little patch there don't leave it if you've got a patch and you've put some paint on some primer on like here where can I show you let me show you like there don't leave it lying around because it dries really fit really fast really quickly so you want to get it on there when it's a nice even coat if you find your brush is dragging when you're smoothing it out, it's because it's starting to dry and you need to put some more on there. You should your brush should just flow over it nice and smoothly like that. If your brush is dragging, it's because the uh, primer is drying. Let's go all the way up that edge. Sitting down in my office chair doing this. It's not a perfect setup, but Hopefully you'll get the gist of it. Now I have got some on the desk. And I'll show you how to clean that up before it dries really hard. Because the uh, the medium is like a glue basically. You can mix your, mix, it's good, multi-medium is good. You can mix your paints with it to make your paints go further. Or you can use it as a primer, or you can use it to seal your painting. And it works well with all of those, I've found. I don't actually use it to mix my paint, I use water. Because when I paint, I paint quite a lot like watercolour. When I paint with acrylics, mix the paints in very thin washes and build up layers and stuff. So that's got a nice even coating. You just apply another little bit here. It seems to have seem to have missed a bit. Get it on there while it's still smooth and wet and flexible. You don't want any big patchy bits on it. Where you missed a bit and then you have to go back over it. Now 
Now that's not a perfectly smooth coat, but it is smooth and it will prime the canvas. So now, just to um, cover the edges, I wipe off the excess off my brush, and you'll have you'll have a slight build up around the edges. So I just go get the brush and just smooth off the edges, so it doesn't have any sticking out lumps of primer on it. Just hold it in the air, it's all right. It doesn't need to be anything technical or special. That's the thing about art, see? Anyone can do it. If you feel inspired to create art, you're an artist, my friend. It's not so much about technical ability, although some technical ability does come into it has more to do with self-expression as Picasso would tell you with his very quick paintings so that's it guys look at that beauty so that's primed you can see it in the reflection look and just leave that to dry for 24 hours and that would be perfect for painting on put another coat on if you want it to be smoother and have a more painterly surface but just one coat's good for me because that all that takes the um takes all the roughness off the tooth of the canvas so here's one i did earlier so you just get the brush which is now covered in primer just put it put it straight back in your water and just let it Give it a clean, quick clean, and let it soak in the water because otherwise the primer will go hard and ruin your brush because it's glue, basically. So let me just show you one I did earlier and I'll show you how translucent it is. So there's my, my, little, art, my little art setup. Look, I've got my easel my brush, uh, my easel box, paint brushes, some acrylic paints, that's it, and I've got a mixing palette. Right, so that's the one I've just done, and this is my next project that I'm working on, and I did this earlier tonight. So, let me move the water. I'll see if I can stand it up. And that, look at that, look. There's probably enough enough in there to do one more A4 or A3 canvas. And that's just one, one teaspoon of each ingredient. I've done the entire canvas, basically. So I'm just putting this one up, stand it up so I can show you better. So this is the one I've just done previously and uh, I don't know where you can see it because it's been primed over but I sketched on the canvas and primed over the top of it with my little multi-medium concoction and you can still see enough sketch underneath with one coat to be able to paint around that. So that's a scene from Apley Beach at Ride on the Isle of Wight. And all this is going to be covered with wallflowers. And then we've got a couple of, got a woman walking her dog on the beach and this is the seawall. And this is all trees and lovely stuff going on up here and that's a bench. So, so that's it guys. So if you want, if you don't want to buy in all the ingredients for gesso try multi-medium gloss it's reasonably cheap I think I bought this one I think that cost me about six pounds on Amazon that was about the same but that's a huge huge chunk of white paint that will last me over a year I should imagine and um, basically I'm gonna buy my prime colors I'm gonna buy red 
blue and yellow and a black and just start mixing my own colors basically so that's it guys let me just show you um, how to clean the desk up quick if you got if you didn't put any paper down if you were lazy like me and now you want to clean the desk up just get some tissue paper basically and uh, just wet the tissue paper one second that I'll dampen it so we just just ran that under the tap got it damp you can see the um, streaky marks here look and if you do that before it dries too hard as soon as it gets uh, wet you can remove it see the whole desk is moving around look. and that's it there's another one there Need a bit more water on there, and this this water is a bit contaminated with white paint now, but it should be all right. There you go. As soon as it's wet, it just comes straight off. Right, brilliant. Thanks, guys. Excuse me, I've got a little itch itch in my eye, itchy eye, as they say. No rude comments about that, thank you. No, I don't think I've got paint in it. Anyway, so that's it, guys. Thanks very much for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope it helped you um, move forward with your painting. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. That's my little video. Thanks very much for watching.